everyone, welcome back to Studio 33 Art by Kay. Today I'm going to be working on this 40 centimetre by 50 centimetre canvas. It's just an old one that I've um, had for a while and I didn't like what I had done on it previously. So I thought I just want to try something out that I haven't done. I've ordered a new hairdryer um, and with it came a diffuser. And when I turned it over and looked at it, I thought, my goodness, imagine pouring paint through that. It just looks fantastic. And all the paint can get out through the sides here because these little pegs here sit higher than the canvas. So I thought I'm going to give this a go. So I'm just trying it, as I say, out on an old canvas that I've got. Um, and I've got some paints that I've been wanting to use up for a while. So I've just mixed up this base, which is just a custom colour made out of some tubes I didn't like. So I'm just going to place this diffuser about in the center, just going by my eyesight there. I think that's about right. Now I might need to come this way a little bit. Whenever I think I've got it right, I usually haven't, but that's about right. So I'm just going to be pouring through the diffuser to see what we get. So, um, Without further ado, I'll start pouring. So the first colour I'm going to put through is the Montmartre Satin Turquoise. So I'm just going to start pouring paint through the centre here. And I'll just pour it straight in through the middle and let it um, gradually go how it wants to. So this is the Montmartre Cyan. Give it a good squirt. And then the Araldo Metallic Copper. I will list all these colours in the description box for you. And the Montmartre Ultra Marine Blue. So I'm just pouring straight into the centre of it. So not a lot of it's getting down to the edges of the pattern there. But we'll see what we get. Metallic Blue. by Global and Araldo Dipiolo Pinky, which is a lovely pink colour. Just pour it in there. And I'm just going to put a bit of the Vallejo Pearl mixed with Amsterdam White, just to create a few cells in there. Not too much of that though. And then I'll just start all over again. So you can see some of the paint coming out now. It's going to be very interesting to see how this comes out. It's really only dropping down through the centre. Whereas I envisaged it was going to um, go down over all the pattern, but we'll see. <laughs> more will I put in there? I might just let that sink down because there's a fair bit of paint here that will spread to the edges um, and I'm probably going to do a little bit of a spin. Right, so that's the last little bit in there. I might put a bit more pink just to finish off with. And now what's going to happen when I lift this off? Might just blow into the centre of it. I 
Are we ready? At least it's got these um, petals sort of differentiated, which is good. So how many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. So here we go, guys. Up and off. Look at that centre. Wow. Okay, so now I'm just going to draw through each of the petals here. I've got a ton of paint on there. Really have gone overboard. That's all right. Oh, it's so deep. I have to make sure I give it a good spin out. Sometimes I think it'd be lovely to be able to just leave these just like that, but the problem is there's so much paint on there that it would, wouldn't dry properly and you'd end up with cracking. Um, yeah, it just wouldn't dry very well at all. So I might just take these back in to the center as well, into the very middle, just to redefine the petals there. So it's kind of like doing a bottle bottom pour, and except it was a hair diffuser pour. Look at that center, it's gorgeous. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit it with the heat tool just to burst any bubbles. Now I'll take it for a bit of a spin because otherwise it's just not going to dry. So I think I've moved everything out of the way far enough. Okay, I'm not going to spin too fast. And that's why I wasn't too worried about what my base colour was going to be because um, it was really just to help the paint to flow. Oh, I want to stop it and I can't. Ah. Ah. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Oh. Oh, I wish it was um, more evenly spread. So that's been going off there. So I might bring it back. I have got it evenly on the turntable. I think it's just probably the paint the base paint, um, there might have been a bit more on one side, which helped it to flow better. So I might just tilt that a little bit. To bring it back this way. And I'll also bring it forward on the turntable just a tad. Hopefully that will help this side to come off a bit better, so we'll see how we go. So I'll spin the other way. You can see this piece here, it's just getting resistance there. And I might need to move it over this way just a tad. Well, just want to get that edge and this edge to move more. So we'll see if that helps or not. No, I'm just going to tilt it.
I always prefer to spin rather than tilt. I just feel like um, it just spreads it out more evenly. This guy here is not wanting to move. Just need to put a bit more paint down, I think. I think I've got a little bit here in the container. Paint was a bit less evenly spread, and that's what can happen as your paint just gets stuck because there wasn't enough paint for it to flow with. Whereas on the other edges, it must have been so. But something to look out for, guys, is to make sure you've got enough paint down that it's helping it to flow rather than hindering the flow process. I can see I didn't have as much down on this side. Okay, so I'll try and tilt this way again. really does not want to move over here. I just really want to get that paint over there. I'm almost feeling like I want to use the hairdryer actually. Just move that paint over a bit. Just um, blow out my edges a little bit. So here goes. This is my new hairdryer. And as you can see, it has a very um, small aperture. It has cold. It's called a D-E-L-I-Y-A. Um, it's lightweight. It has a centre handle and has three temperatures. So I'll have it on cool and two speeds. So you need to have it on high. So I'm just see if I can just blow this over a bit. Well, that was a definite win. I was really able to control that very, very well. Um, so it blew out with enough force, but because the aperture wasn't too wide, I was really able to um, control that quite well. So as you can see, I've been able to keep my center fairly well, except of course here where it didn't want to um, stretch before, but I'm really loving that. I think that that's worked out really, really well. Um, I wonder what I can do here. I feel like I just want to kind of drag those out a little bit. You can see that that paint in the center here is still very thick. But we'll see how it dries. It might dry all right. Let's help to drag those this way a little bit. So it's certainly not um, symmetric in any way, but it's still very pretty. What do we do in the middle here? See how thick that is. A fair bit of paint in the middle there. So I might just do a couple of little balloon kisses. 
just to um, get the paint out. I've just got a little old one that's gone flat pretty much. But that will be all right just to bring the paint up in the center there. Okay, so now I'm just going to fix up my edges, just finger popping from the paint that's run off, just looking for anywhere where the paint hasn't come over on the edge. Just to make sure the edges are all covered. And then I'll put this in a um, spot where it can be just left level to dry. I'll just pop it up on some cups. And I think the back's all covered by the look of it. Oh, just one spot there. Oh, a few bits there. So all you need to do, you just put your finger into the paint that's run off. And then just um, touch the sides. And then they're all finished. Okay, well I think that's um, a pretty beautiful piece. I'll just hit it with the heat embossing tool just to get any of the last bubbles off it. So I think that was pretty well successful. Um, the diffuser worked well, gave me that beautiful pattern in the middle. And the hairdryer worked well. I was able to really control where I was blowing out. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how it goes when I'm doing a normal Dutch pour, but I think it will go well. And the colours look gorgeous. And I've managed to cover up all that base paint that I had down that I didn't like. Um, so yeah, all in all, it's turned out really, really beautiful. So I shall now bring you down for a close up. Okay, so here we are coming down for a close-up of this hairdryer diffuser um, Dutch pour and um, it's turned out quite lovely. So I could see I could do, you know, quite a lot of different things with this um, and the colours have blended very, very nicely. Um, this was just an experiment anyway at this stage. So... But the idea is there and that center is just lovely. So I definitely will be using the hair diffuser again, if nothing else, just to get that lovely center. Okay, so that's it for today, guys. Hopefully, hopefully you enjoyed that and um, learned something along with me. And we'll be back here in Studio 33 in the not too distant future. Until then, stay safe. Bye bye. <music>